Kia ora koutou. For many networks, it is useful to encode not only the existence of a relationship between two nodes, as we do with arcs, but also the strength, weight or cost of that relationship. We do this by associating with each arc a real valued weight and look at so-called weighted digraphs. For example, if nodes represent locations and arcs represent the presence of a row between them, the weight could represent, say, the distance between the locations, the time or cost to travel between the locations, or say the amount of traffic that uses the road that links the locations. In our discussions, we'll use the terms weight, distance, and cost interchangeably. So let's formalize some of this. So a weighted digraph is a pair G and C, where G is just the digraph, and C is a function which associates each arc with some real number. So C takes an arc and maps it, into, maps it to a real number. So for an arc UV, CUV is just the cost of using UV. Notice that an unweighted digraph can be considered as a weighted digraph by just giving each arc uh, weight 1. So here's an example of a weighted digraph on four nodes. What have we got? Five arcs and you know, the weight of the arc from 1 to 0 is given by this number here, is 1. The weight of the arc from 0 to 2 is 3, and so on. If we want to write that formally, we'd write, so, you know, the cost of the arc 0, 2 is 2, the cost of the arc 1, 0 is 1, and so on. Now, to represent these weighted digraphs in a computer, we'll need to mod modify our data structures so they can represent the weight information. For adjacency matrices, this is easy. Instead of putting one in an adjacency matrix to represent the presence of an arc, we'll put the value of C there. So for example, here, the first row of the adjacency matrix just has 0, 0, 3, 0. The second row has... We'll need to be careful when zero happens to be a legal weight for an arc, and in that case, we may need to use null or infinity to represent the absence of an arc. In our lectures here, we'll use the convention that zero means there is no arc, as I have used here. The adjacency list representation is modified so there are now a list of pairs. The first item in the pair is the out neighbor as before, the second, is the cost of the arc leading to that out neighbor. So the first list for node zero has uh, two as an out neighbor. So we put in two, and then we follow it by the cost of the arc going from zero to two, which is three. The second list is for one, and we just have out neighbor zero at a cost of one. So these two representations are equivalent. Again, we can spend time looking at how long it takes to do standard operations on either of these representations, and you'll find the results are the same as in unweighted digraphs that we saw before. Many problems can be formulated as optimization problems on weighted graphs. We'll look at a few of the classic algorithms associated with such, such problems in the next few lectures. But first, let's remind ourselves of a few definitions. We've previously looked at distance in unweighted digraphs, where the distance between nodes u and v is simply the number of arcs and the shortest path between them. In a weighted digraph, the distance from node u to v is the cost of the minimum path from u to v, where the cost of the path is just the sum of costs on that path. Remember, we write distance of u to v as duv. So in this weighted digraph, the distance from 1 to 2 is the cost of getting from 1 to 2, which is 1 plus 3. So the distance is 4. Whereas the distance of getting from 2 back to 1 is just going across this arc with a cost 2. Notice that the distance between nodes is not always the shortest in terms of number of arcs it crosses. So in our example here, the cost of getting from node 3 
to node 0 via the shortest route is 6 plus 1, so that's 7, whereas going what looks like a more circuitous route through 2, then to 1, and then up to 0 costs 1 plus 2 plus 1, which is 4. So the distance of from 3 to 0 is 4. Notice there's no way back from 0 to 3, so the distance from 0 to 3 is either undefined or often we'll just write it as um, positive infinity. It's often helpful to have the distance matrix for a digraph. That is a matrix where the ijth entry of the matrix is the distance from node i to node j. So for our example here, we'll have distance from 0 to 0 is 0, distance from 0 to 1 is 5, and so on. So this is the distance matrix for this digraph here. We'll define the diameter of a strongly connected digraph G to be the maximum over all possible distances in the graph. That is, if the digraph is not strongly connected, the diameter is undefined, though often we'll set that to be infinity. So using that definition, clearly the diameter is simply the maximum entry in the distance matrix. How in general can we find the distance matrix? Let's first consider the unweighted situation. In the unweighted case, the answer is simple, we can use BFS. So if we want to find the distance of any node from some node U, we run BFS visit from U and record the level of each node in the resulting search tree. That'll be its distance from U. Nodes that are not in the search tree are unreachable from U, and we can set their values to be infinity. For example, let's look at this digraph. We'll run a BFS visit from U equals 3. And this is the search tree we get. So 3 is at distance 0 from itself, 1 and 2 are at distance 1, and 0 is at distance 2. That is, we get the row corresponding to 3 in our distance matrix as 2, 1, 1, 0. So if we want to get the entire matrix, we'll just run BFS visit from each node in turn. So in a weighted digraph, the BFS method typically fails since it counts distances in arcs, not in weights. So in this example, say, if we had weights, a large weight here, and smaller weights here, the, the best path from 3 to 0 would be this longer one, uh, but the BFS method would always find the one that's shortest in terms of arcs and produce the same tree. So it would come up with the wrong solution. So it's clear that in weighted digraphs, the problem is harder. So let's concentrate on finding just a single row in the matrix rather than the whole matrix. So this is known as the single source shortest paths problem, or SSSP. So the single source shortest paths problem looks like this. We're given a weighted digraph, G, with cost matrix C. We're given a source, S, which is just one of the nodes in G. And for each node U in G, we need to find the shortest path from the source to U. So there's a nice algorithm that solves this, known as Dijkstra's algorithm, named after its inventor, the influential uh, Dutch computer scientist, Edsger Dijkstra. Um, and it performs this task so long as there are no negative weights. If there are negative weights, Dijkstra's algorithm may find the correct answer, but it's not guaranteed to do so. So the basic idea of Dijkstra's algorithm is that it will build up a solution to the single source shortest paths problem, one node at a time. Having a set of visitors nodes we'll call S, and we'll ensure that we add nodes to S in such a way that the shortest path from the source to any node in S is indeed the minimum weight path we're afterward. We'll also keep a track of the distances of all nodes in the digraph from the source using only paths that go through S. Every time we add a node to S, 
we'll need to update these distances. And then once we've added all nodes to S, we're going to be finished. At the start, S consists just of the source node, little s. We then probe all fringe nodes, which we define to be nodes that are just one arc away from some node of S. And we'll find the closest fringe node. Let's call it U. So U is the node outside of our set S, which is, has the shortest distance to the source. We'll add U to S, and then we'll update the distances to all nodes not in S to see if there is the shortest path through the nodes in S that includes U. So I'll add U to S, and then I'll update the distances to all fringe nodes outside of S that may have a shortest path that goes through U. So then we'll once again look for the closest fringe node, we'll add it to S, and so on, slowly building up S, node by node. Once we include all nodes, we're guaranteed to have our shortest paths to every node from the source. Let's look at the code. So here's Dijkstra's algorithm. We pass in a weighted diagram G with cost matrix C, and the source node S for which we're trying to calculate distances from. At the top here, we're just doing setup. We've got a couple of arrays which will keep track of whether nodes are in the completed set, which we had been calling capital S, and which will color them black if they're completed, or white if they're not yet done. The dist array, or distance array, is where we store the length of the shortest path using only the black nodes from node S to any node U. We start by coloring all nodes white and setting the value of dist for node U to be the weight of the arc that goes from S to U, if such an arc exists, otherwise it is infinite. So we're essentially copying out the, that row of the cost matrix. Initially, the distance to the source node S is zero. The only node which is black is the source. Okay, so here we are at the main loop. Remember what we're doing here. We're building up the set of black nodes and the dist array keeps track of the shortest path to each node as long as that path consists only of black nodes. So what do we do? We find the white node U which is closest to the set of black nodes. That is what the one with the minimum value of dist. We add U to the black set, and then we go through every node, checking whether it is white, and then checking whether there is a better path from the source to that node that uses the newest black node, U. So either the distance to X remains what it was, or it is updated uh, via the path through U. So the path from the source to U, and then uh, using the arc from U to X. We exit the loop when all nodes are black, and at that point, the dist array records the shortest path to every node in the digraph, and that's what we return. We can immediately see that only the out neighbors of U will ever get updated in this loop. So we don't have to iterate over all nodes VG, we only need to look at the out neighbors of U, which are easily accessible using adjacency lists. So let's change that. Okay, we've updated that. So let's work an example and see what's going on. We'll run Dijkstra on this digraph with source node zero. So we start with all nodes colored white, but the color of the source node is black, and we initialize the distance array to be the weight of any arc that exists from zero, otherwise it's infinite. So the distance to zero is zero, the distance to one is three, the distance to two is one, and so on. So now we're at the start of this while loop, there are still white nodes, so we look for the node with the lowest dist, which is 2 with a dist of 1, 
we'll color to black, and now we'll go through each of the out neighbors, updating its distance if possible. Looking at out neighbor one, the distance, current distance to one is three, uh, but the path through two and on to one has distance one plus the cost of this arc, which is one. One and one is two, which is less than three, so we'll update this entry. The only other out neighbor is four, which currently has infinite distance, so we update that to be the distance to two, which is one again, and plus the weight of this arc, which is six. Uh, one plus six is seven, so we update this entry. There's no more out neighbors of two, so we're back here at the top of the while loop. We'll look for another white node, the one with the lowest dist, which will be one. We'll add one to the black set, and then we'll look at its out neighbors. So one has out neighbors three and four. Let's look at three first. So the current distance to three is five. The distance to one is two. And then there's an arc going from one to three of cost two. Two plus two is four, which is less than five. So we'll update this entry to be four. Now looking at out neighbor four. Four has current dist seven whereas the dist to one is two, and the cost of this arc is two. Two plus two is four, which is less than seven. So again, we can update this entry to be four. We're now done with one. Again, we choose either three or four, which are the only white nodes. We'll choose three as it's got the lower index. Add it to the black set. Look at its out neighbors. It has out neighbors one and four. We're only interested in white out neighbors, so we'll ignore one, we'll look at four. The distance to four is currently four. The distance from uh, to three is also four. And so using a path through three plus this arc would cost um, four plus one, which is five, which is greater than four. So We'll leave the dist of four as it is, and we're all done. Now we'll add uh, four to the black set. It's got no white out neighbors. So we're, we're back at the top of the while loop where there are no white nodes. We'll come down here and we'll return our distance array. And that completes our pass through Dijkstra's algorithm.